Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in from. It's Sammy Smiles here, and I just want to take a minute to share with you some of the things I've been reading. I'm currently reading this book, Intentional Living by John C. Maxwell. I don't know if you've seen it before, but it's a great book, and it's about how we can live an intentional life life okay um so just want to welcome everyone who's tuning in today uh please feel free to leave a comment and tell me where you are watching from whether it's uh here in the u.s or in uganda or in uh, germany wherever let's get to know who's joining us today and um as you see the title intentional living People will summarize your life in one sentence. What do you want that sentence to be? That's what we'll be discussing. So join me and let's have a good time. <laughs> what does intentional living mean to you? You're watching today. Just uh, leave me a comment and tell me. What does it mean to you, intentional living? What does that mean to you? Does it mean anything to you? Is that something that you would say uh, you understand, it makes sense to you? Okay. Tell me, comment below. Let me know. Mm -hmm. All right, I just wanted to welcome you in a more wonderful environment where we can chat and connect and discuss. So, uh, I can see people joining, Megan, Ronnie, Daniel, Danso, da, mm, da, Danston, Katz. Thank you for joining. Where are you joining from? Please leave a comment. Tell me where you're joining from. Um, let's catch up. Let's discuss. What does intentional living mean to you? At the end of your life, at the end of your life and mine, people are going to describe our life in one sentence like this. What would you like it to be? John Maxwell writes and says, Intentional living is living life that matters. Are you living a life that matters? Or do you feel like you could live a more meaningful life? I know that's, that's something I would say for myself that I can definitely live make my life more meaningful, living better, doing things that matter with people that matter, uh, during time that matters, you know what I mean? So what, what does intentional living mean to you? And I want to share with you three things that are, so far I've read in this book that I think we can all apply to have a meaningful life. And the first one is this, to remember to tell your story. I usually make people laugh when I do interviews on radio. Sometimes I say, I'm, my name is Samuel Avinsingus. I'm from a small village in western Uganda. And, uh, and sometimes people think there's no way you can come from a village and, and do the things that you do, sing the way that, you, the kind of music that you sing. Uh, do the things that you do you know it's interesting but we all have a story to tell we all have something of value to bring to this life we all have a talent a gift ability that we can sow in this world uh, and the first thing to live a meaningful life I want to say it is to tell 
your story. When I say tell your story, I imagine that the first thing that comes to mind is, oh, I need to talk about my past. We think, uh, in fact, for me, the first time I read it, I thought telling your story means talking about your, your, your past. Well, telling your story is part of talking about your past, but it is more than that. I want you to think about tell your story in the present and the present continuous tense. In the future tense, from now going forward, what can you and I do that matter, that make a difference? From now going forward, what are some of the things you want to achieve in your life that will make other people's lives better? I think that's what making a difference means. That's what living a life that matters means. That's what intentional living means i truly believe that uh, we are the tellers of our stories but more importantly there is a higher power that really has already told us that i believe tr truly that god has already mapped our story okay Let's call it plotted our story. It, when I was in, was it high school? Was it? It must have been high school in math classes. You would draw dots and you draw, you you do map. Yeah? You draw a line. I don't remember the name of that line that covers the most number of points possible. And that was the, I guess, I don't, I don't remember what that was. But I believe that God has already mapped had, has already plotted things within our life that he expects of us to do, to accomplish. Opportunities that he expects of us to take. Blessings for us to receive and experience. That's what I truly believe that God has already mapped, mapped, or what you want to call plotted. And our responsibility in telling our story is going through each of those opportunities. Sometimes people say, I've had such a horrible past, I don't think I can have an incredible future. I don't believe that. I believe that regardless of the life you've had before, you can still have an incredible life going forward. Why do I believe that? Because I believe God has already mapped, has already, already plotted your life with significance with abundance, with excellency, name it. And even if you have missed the points in your life in the past, now going forward, you and I can begin to live the life that God has plotted for us or mapped for us. That's what I truly believe. Because when you look in the Bible, the people who whose life looked like it was already ruined it was already it was already a mess but god used their lives going forward to tell an incredible story so what story would you like to tell what story are you telling you know this reminds me as i speak now it's um what time is it right now here in the u.s it's probably midday as i speak but i know I think right now it's probably 7 p.m. in Uganda, probably 6 p.m. in Dubai, um, about 5 p.m. in the UK. Now, can you imagine the difference in time? Our time zones are different, okay? And I want to tell you something about this. Our time zones are different. And sometimes when we are in the middle of darkness, we compare ourselves with people that are whose time zone is day. I don't know if you're understanding this. One of the problems we, we experience in life is comparing our season with someone else's season. Imagine if, if I said God is not fair because it's day now and it's night in Uganda. It just does not make sense. When I follow my timeline, my season, 
surely as morning comes after night my night will come my day will come i want you to think of life in the same way there has been experiences you've had in your life that have looked like you are in the middle of the night and it's taking long for morning to come but let me tell you this let me promise you as long as you follow your season as long as you continue to pursue that which you know god has destined for you i promise you morning will come so the first one first thing i've learned from this book is to tell your story tell your story now going forward let our focus be less of our past and more of our future what would you want people to say on that final day and if uh, I've, I've done i've personally right now uh, done uh, what i can call activity to write down some of the things i want my story to tell okay so the, one of the activities i'm going to give on this video you don't have to do it but if you really find this meaningful i challenge you to do it i want you to get a piece of paper a free piece of paper and a pen and write down five to ten things that you want to experience in your future let's say if you are to plot your life what are some of those things that you want to experience and i don't just mean goals and dreams and yes this can be goals and dreams but what experiences would you like to have now i'm going to read for you one of them and i explain it uh as i speak today we are we are running a foundation called mackenzie foundation and we're taking care of 150 children in the village of gangari uh providing them with scholastic materials education and a breakfast and uniform shoes uh vaseline toothpaste toothbrush every time and one of the things that i've put down that i want to experience in life that i want that i want to fight for this is what i wrote down i wrote down that i um Okay, 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 okay. Uh -huh. To fight for the future of the children in our village, to enhance their narrative on life through education, developing their talents, and creating for them, uh, for them life-changing opportunities. That's one of the things I wrote down that I definitely want to experience in life, to make sure that I can do something that makes a difference in other people's lives. Our dream actually is to build a school and a very, very uh, excellent school where children in the village can access very good quality education. And they can also access good books. They can read. They can compete. You know, one of the things that we take for granted is education. But without education, especially coming from such a village, it's very hard to compete with the world because... How do you compete when you don't know the language, you don't know how to read, you know how to write? So one of the things I'm really vested in, I want to map in my life definitely, is to create an environment for these children to thrive, to win, to compete on an international level. That's what I wrote down. I have other nine things I wrote down. What do you want to experience in your life? What do you want your story to tell? So when I said, tell your story, I don't just mean tell your past tell where you've been that's all good that's fantastic but what do you want your life to say going forward what is what are some of those things you know if you did if you became that person more people can benefit maybe i should read you another one that i wrote down um, mm, 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 mm. okay 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 now you don't have to write the same things i wrote okay don't steal my stuff all right uh okay mm, which one should i read ah uh, becoming a published author speaker and coach that's one of my passions as i speak today i'm one of john maxwell coaches trainers and speakers which is fantastic but i want to continue to explore that to become a published author to write to write a book not one, but many. 
and to continue to explore that really i want to be i it's not just about releasing a book but to become someone who has written material that can serve and add value to others that's why i'm writing this down um i have others that i've written down some are so personal but why don't you go ahead and get a piece of paper and a pen or a notebook and write down 10 things you'd want to experience in your life and now going forward choosing to do those things you see i want to read you a quote that really made a lot of sense to me while i was reading this book um one of the best places to start to turn your life around okay is doing whatever appears on your mental list the i should mental list most of us i'm sure as i do this video including myself who said i should do this i should do this i should write a new song i should whatever book i should do this course i should travel this destination i should forgive that person i should give to charity i should help this person and we haven't and one of the best places to start to turn your life and my life around is by doing those things that are on our i should mind list so go ahead don't tell me that you're going to write these things down get some time and do them okay Mm. Another quote I found in this book that made a lot of sense. It says, you never know how well you can swim until you are in over your head. I don't want to tell this story, but I'm tempted to. I remember the first time I thought I knew how to swim, but I didn't. Uh, a friend of, my, of mine had invited me after our high school term, one of the one of the end of term holidays i i he invited me to go visit him in in the city and now this was my first time in the city so i left the village i jumped on the bus with him and we came all the way to kampala first time in kampala of course everything was new to me i was very naive of of life this friend of mine is his name is benson he's actually the one who taught me how to play acoustic guitar when I was in high school. So we came home, had a good time. Everything was new to me in Kampala, but we ended up going to, to watch a basketball game where some of our students from our school were going to play. It was like, it was a sprite competition. So we went to that school, we saw people playing, and uh, just after the game, we decided to go and do some swimming. Now, growing up, I would go to swim in the rivers, in the neighboring ponds and i thought i knew how to swim and so we get ready uh we change we jump in the pool and uh, we jump on the shallow end so everything is good and so we have a lineup of people on the shallow end everyone is like people are swimming people know how to swim in kampala i'm new i don't know how to swim but i thought i knew how to swim because i was swing, swimming in the ponds and rivers back home so we have a lineup at the shallow end and one of the guys says why don't we compete and swim from the shallow end and still be the first one to reach the deep end why don't we compete and me being naive thinking i know how to swim i was like yeah why don't we do it so everyone got ready someone counted us in bang we started swimming so we swam, we swam, we swam, we swam. And of course, the first few minutes, you are energetic, you're excited, you're competitive. And just a few minutes in, I think I was probably close to the middle. I started feeling uh, a little bit weak. And I, I was like, why don't I give up on this thing and just continue swimming in the shallow end? Well, giving up on swimming, trying to swim, meant that I was definitely going to be going under the water and i just kind of stopped swimming and literally i was going drowning down in the water literally and i could my feet could not touch the ground that right like frightened me my feet could not touch the ground i couldn't scream i waited for my feet to touch the ground they were not and 
I now knew that if I don't do something, I could lose my life. I tried to swim. I pushed the water back. This time I was swimming to the side of the swimming pool. I forced my body like it was the hardest 10 seconds of my life. Forced my body through the water and literally put my fingers on the, well, what do you call it? On the wall of the swimming pool pulled myself out and could literally not breathe and just sat on the side of the pool. Now, no one really noticed that I was struggling, but I realized that I was in over my head. That's when I realized I don't know how to swim, okay? It happened like that. So you never know how well you can swim until you're in over your head. You never know how impactful you can be in life until you're in over your head. Now, that was for me a, a, a bad setting experience, but then I realized I, need, I needed to learn how to swim, and I started learning from people. And, well, now I can swim. I'm not that great, but I can. So I want to say that let's not wait for for all the conditions to be favorable for us to make a difference. Let's begin now, okay? Let's begin now. I want to read you another quote that really made a lot of sense to me. The world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but those who look on and do nothing. I know when you look around, especially our communities, there's lots of things that are not going right. There's a place that you have identified that I believe you know you can make a difference. Why not go ahead and make a difference today? It does not have to be big. You can start small. You know, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. As I conclude this video, this is the last story I want to tell you. One day, uh, John Maxwell, and he tells this story in the book. Mm, everyone loves stories, you know? Everyone loves good movies. Everyone loves good series. Everyone loves, you know, everyone loves stories, you know. Um, it, when we go to church, when, the someone is only better when it has stories in. When we go to movies, now the movie is only great when it tells a great story. When we go to, um, what else, what else, what else? A song, a song is so captivating when it tells a story. Stories are part of life. At the end of the day, when you're chatting with your friends, sometimes you ask, how's been your day? Really, what we're caring to hear about is, tell me the story of your day. Stories are the real deal. In, in my business, we say that facts tell, stories sell. In fact, look at all the commercials. They tell a story. A good commercial tells a story. And this is... Uh, so John Maxwell was one day doing his business, doing what he does best, doing his life. And a friend of his handed to him a special gift. Now, this was going to be a unique gift because it was from a friend, a good friend. So John Maxwell opened... Um, open the gift, open the gift, open the gift to find a book. He found a book. And in this book, the title of the book was reading The Greatest Story Ever Told. Okay? Please listen. It was reading, the title was The Greatest Story Ever Told. And he, tell, he goes on to say he was flipping excited. He thought this is I need to know this. Is this about the Bible? Is this about to... Wh wh what, what is this story about? He was excited to read. And when he opened the first page of the book, this is what he found, okay? And I'm going to put my name on it, uh, but you can as well put your name on it. It said... So I'm going to put your name on that. Put your name on the first line, okay? Your name, okay? Your, your name. Your life is before you feel let me say that again your life is before you 
fill these pages with kind acts, good thoughts, and matters of your heart. Write a great story with your life. That's what you found on the first page of the book. And when you try to scroll through the, the book, it had empty pages, just like you see this book, eh? It had empty pages. So as I finish this video today, I hand to you the same book, okay? I hand to you the same book. The title is The Greatest Story Ever Told. And on your first page, these words are written, okay? These words are written. I'm going to choose someone. Shannon, your life is before you. Fill these pages with kind acts, good thoughts, and matters of your heart. Write a great story with your life. I hope this has been a meaningful video. Thank you for tuning in. If you love this content, like, comment, share, or even connect with me on my other social media channels, Instagram, I use Sammy Smiles everywhere. Instagram, um, my Facebook page, Twitter, and anywhere else. Join me for more videos coming up soon. Have a great day, a great evening, a great night. May God bless you.